there is a high suicide rate in the FIFO community, which is incredibly sad. So many people kill themselves in mining that they were like, holy shit, like, what do we do? Let's just like flood an industry with mental health. Like mental health, right? Obviously a lot of isolation and there's a lot of different things. Definitely in Kalgoorlie, because like a lot of the FIFO people, they're away from their families. They see the same people at work every day. Then they come in here, they see like a female that wants to talk to them, wants to listen. So I think that's why a lot of them come in. Like that's looking for connection. I think it's affected me more mentally than it has in reality, so... My name's Luke, I'm 25 years old. My name's James or Jimmy. I'm an electrician and currently work FIFO at the moment, sort of all around WA and I'm a geologist that's been working in mining exploration for probably the last six years. What got me into the mining industry was, I guess, studying geology. Um, I never actually really knew that I liked geology and what that actually entailed. I just knew I loved being outdoors and doing science and that brought me into the world of FIFO and exploration working remotely. Did work placement in high school, finished year 11 and went straight into the apprenticeship. A few years later I went back, finished my time and yeah, just eventually ended up working up north and just gravitated there I guess. Nice in the desert. First experience was working in a remote town called Kew. Population of around about 50 people, working in like a small junior exploration company. It was an awesome experience but that first two weeks when things all hit me that in the middle of nowhere, away from my family and friends. Kind of hit me as a bit of a shock and sort of made me question a little bit as to, I guess, why am I doing this? But then after a while, really enjoy the work and, or at least I've really enjoyed the work and that sort of got me to push past that for a little bit. But that thought and that feeling wasn't something that just disappeared after that first experience. It's something that's popped up time and time again, especially when you might have a busy swing and um, that feeling of isolation can definitely pop up and. I guess, play, play some tricks in your mind. Obviously a lot of isolation and there's a lot of different things. You're away from a lot of your comforts, whether it be friends or family or your favourite gym, your favourite gigs on the weekend that you're going to miss. Like, there is definitely the downsides to it. But I guess that's just somewhat what boys go through is you've got this ego of everything's going great, I'm the best at this, I'm the best at that, or no, I'm not actually that bad at this. And you struggle to face those, those issues within yourself and especially verbalising them. I think mental health um, is definitely being spoken about a lot more in the last, what, five or six years, I think, since it, you know, are you okay days and things like that. like. They, it is it is an open topic, but at the same time, like I can't I can't say that everyone's actually opening up. I think yeah. I think it's a there's a banner there's a there's a sticker or a magnet on a fridge in the crib room saying are you okay? But yeah, I think that's as far as it goes. Like people are still withdrawn 100% with actually talking about it. I've been living in Skimpy for a year and a half. But that was like half of that has been up north in the Pilbara and Kimberleys. I've been in Skimpy for two and a half years. But I've been in Cal three times, so like four weeks total probably out of the yeah. two years. Definitely in Kalgoorlie because like a lot of the FIFO people, they're away from their families. They see the same people at work every day, and a lot there's a lot of that, a lot of that male culture in minds that you don't talk about things or you're just gonna man up. Then they come in here, they see like a female that wants to talk to them, wants to listen. So I think that's why a lot of them come in. Like that's looking for connection, definitely. Like men who are away from their partners or like men who broke like divorced from their wives and are alone, things also like that. the boys that do like two weeks on and one week off yeah. or three weeks on and one week off, they don't really have time to make a connection back home. So pretty much go home, you know, they're tired from obviously doing two weeks, three weeks work and do their washing, do your usual life and then come back to work. So this is kind of, I feel like this is their main life, which is kind of sad as well. Um, and I think that's why they make connections with us and we end up being quite, quite good friends with some of them because we become a known face that they can talk to about more of their personal life that they probably can't talk to with the boys at work. 
Generally, it's feeling sad. It's, it's relationship issues. It's, it's, it's historical stuff that they've been dealing with for some time. It's, we've got to a point in their life where they want to talk to someone. One of the challenges for young people is, is, is being able to access psychology services. Delays in being able to see uh, counselling services, being able to be connected with psychology services, or in general, a support service that can work with them uh, around their mental health journey or some of the challenges that they're experiencing. There is a high suicide rate in the FIFO community, which is incredibly sad. So many people killed themselves in mining that they were like, holy shit, like, what do we do? Let's just like flood an industry with mental health, like mental health, right? I wouldn't want to say suicide, but maybe suicidal thoughts no, even. No, no. But that's a hard thing to say. But you, you do notice that they chirp up and most boys come in, say, we come in here to forget about our day, for you to entertain mm -hmm. us and make us feel good about ourselves. So you do get a few. Yeah. Like, but then that being said, come in. Yeah, but that being said, like, sometimes the stuff they're coming in for for entertainment, like, it, yeah, and I guess that goes into, like, the sexualization thing. Are they coming in for, like, over-sexualization stuff or are they coming in for connection, like, which you don't know? Um, I don't know, but like if you remove it but supplement it with something else, it would be all right, like a free counselling and things like that or like other ways to connect like groups and sports and like mm. stuff around they the mines. Really have... But they don't have any of that really no. that I know of. Obviously losing dad at such a young age and bottling that up for so long, I think there was a few cracks starting to show and yeah, whether it would be sort of, you know, temperament or lack of focus or just feeling lethargic all the time, like I could just sort of feel, it just felt like I wasn't taking enough care of my brain or paying any attention to it. One of the hard things, seeking mental health help is pretty expensive in Australia, you know, you need a few dollars behind you to get that. So I think that deters a lot of people, but yeah, when I could finally do it, took a few different goes, I went to a couple of therapists and so I landed in, um, yeah, kinesiology. I didn't like people feeling sorry for me. I didn't like people, I didn't like bringing the mood down in the room. And that was a big thing for me. Um, I think that stopped me from actually speaking about it. I think that bottling up and yeah, have carrying that around for so long. I just wanted to pretend it didn't happen and everything was all sunshine and rainbows still, but. Do you think because he passed away from suicide, that's, change your perspective on mental health at all or I'd, approach to it i think so definitely yeah um i think growing up everyone thinks they're you know their dad's the toughest thing in the world so yeah um <laughs> I think as you get older and you come to age and you know you start going through financial stresses and this and that you know i don't have a family to provide for or he wouldn't talk about it you know when i think i saw him cry once and that was just before it all happened like i think anyone could be struggling and yeah you just absolutely have no idea and lucky in a way i haven't had to go through that loss through suicide too many times but it's, it's happened to me once but that being said i couldn't tell you one mate that hasn't experienced it at such a close range. So it's a scary thing, it's, it's, it's creeping around and that's the hardest part is you don't know who it's creeping up on. Working in rural towns and in the mining industry, that's, I think it's affected me more mentally than it has in reality. With those negative loops that I get into from time to time when the swing gets busy, um, a lot of it comes from, I guess, concern that your mate's gonna forget about you and you're, on your break, you miss out on key events or uh, when things are going bad, you, you're not always there to help out family and friends and, and your partner. Essentially Headspace is a mild to moderate step down service. Anything that since within that complex sort of category, uh, we work in a ship with child adolescent mental health services. We try to work um, collaboratively uh, just to ensure that a young person is supported. Uh, they have the option of wraparound support services going forward. Now, things are starting to change. There's a lot more women coming into the workplace, which is fantastic. And 
along with that, there's been a whole progressive push towards mental health and being more of an inclusive working environment. Big part of your mind wandering is putting down your phone. You're constantly looking at, you know, stories and reels and this and that on your phone, and it's constantly taking your mind off of what you're actually up there for, which is to work. That can kick in your FOMO, you start feeling like you're missing out. Limiting screen time. Keep yourself busy up there. Don't just sit in your room and do nothing after work. Go, go train, go socialise. Like I said, keep your phone down, 100%. Expressing emotions for me growing up, especially in high school, as a young young boy prior to that, it's all just fun and games really. It's kind of the best time of your life. But then high school you really start, well for me it was quite a intense time where there's lots going on, you, you go through puberty, lots of emotions and all, the, all these different kind of things. You're not quite sure how to, who you are and what the world is to you. During those years, I never, me and my mates, we never actually talk about when things are bad. So for me, I tended to be the person that would bottle things up. I guess I'd let that out on the sports field for me. That was an outlet for me, but it would never be talking about it. It'd always just be internalizing it. But since journaling and then also coming to terms with the fact that I do bottle things up, me actually reaching out to friends has actually allowed me to develop those relationships further. I'm very grateful to have a partner where we can share those vulnerabilities as well. In terms of relationships with friends and stuff, like I said, it, there's a lot of downtime. Like, pick up your phone, give your mate a call that you haven't spoken to in a bit. I'll find that I just get bored sometimes and buzz a mate and then you end up having a chat for half hour, 45 minutes. When, you know, when you're at home, you're busy, you kind of forget to do those sort of things. That can really build you up. Go to sleep with a smile because you've had a good yarn with your mate and yeah, go to work the next day. The government's really trying to push the psychosocial aspect in mining and exploration as well. In terms of the current impact that's had in the industry, it's hard to really tell. There's no obvious change from what I can see, but at least within some of the big companies, there is an internal push for really trying to, I guess, make it okay for people to speak out when things aren't going so well and giving people access to psychologists. Like maybe getting people one-on-one -on -one and just ask them, how are they? Or if someone's like reaching out to you and respond to their message, it's about the people by the end of the day, right? It's not about money. If you're gonna to go to the mines, uh, it's, it's great. You know, enjoy your time, but you do have to put in a bit of self-care. You, you do have to keep yourself in check. Make sure you get to bed early. Don't get sucked into the beers every night and, you know, burning away your money at the pub if you're near a pub on site. But try and just keep a little healthy routine, you know, eat good, go to the gym, do a bit of training. Keep in touch with your friends. Use that time at the end of the night to call a mate. That definitely helps.